Gregory, good evening to you. Um, describe the pearl for us. Well, it's quite a large one. It's, uh, you know, a bit bigger than a, a child's marble. So not quite two centimeters in diameter, but a lot bigger than the average pearl you'd see in jewelry. Where was it found and by who? Well, this was found up at Richmond in uh, central Queensland, out in the outback. And it was found by some local fossickers and they took it into uh, Chronosaurus Corner because they had been prospecting a bit and looking for fossils in the pits that Chronosaurus Corner runs. And so they took it in and the curator who was there at the time, Michelle Johnston, said, oh, that looks a lot like a pearl, but it would have been the first one found there. So she's the one who brought it to me to verify. That was quite a long time ago. What's been the delay? Uh, well, it's taken a long time from the viewpoint. It was found originally in 2019. And between COVID and other work commitments and just uh, uh, there's so much to describe about Australia's you know, cultural heritage and history, uh, it's just taken this long. Uh, we still haven't published the paper on it. There's some details that I can't really talk about, but we've, we've done some very nice analyses, very high tech at the Australian uh, Nuclear Science and Engineering Organization and a colleague down there named Joseph Bevitt. And we will be publishing on it, but it's been put on display at Chronosaurus Corner. And so uh, we just thought it's taken so long, it's good that the museum has shared it with people so that people can go see this really amazing fossil. Um, how do you date it? Well, it, it isn't dated itself, but the rocks that it's contained in have been dated. So we already kind of knew the age of the deposit when it was found, uh, but the verification we've had is to just say whether it really is a pearl or not, because there are a lot of potential different things that are round that you might find uh, in the rocks. Mm. And so determining that it is in fact a pearl and not something else uh, is the role that we played in that. So you usually associate pearls with clams and the water. Did this yes. area used to be water? Yes, it did. It, you know, even though this is really high and dry, you know, central Queensland, out in the Great Artesian Basin, back in the Cretaceous, if you go back uh, to when the dinosaurs were on land and so forth, there were times when we had the Aramanga Sea where water actually came in up from the Gulf of Carpentaria and flooded most of central uh, eastern Australia. So this was a huge uh, inland sea and it had all kinds of diverse marine life in it, including these huge clams that, in fact, didn't have big pearls, but it also had marine reptiles. Mm. And they've even found pterodactyls that were obviously eating the fish and fallen in, but marine turtles, all kinds of fish. And uh, there's an amazing uh, you know, natural history heritage of all of this ancient marine life just sitting up there in the rocks and also on t display at Chronosaurus Corner. Yeah, fantastic. Has, has anything like this fossil pearl been found before? Well, this is the first one of these that's been found in Australia. It's not the first fossil pearl. There were a few found by opal miners down in Cooper Pedy, uh, and these uh, fossils are actually just barely older. They're kind of maybe up to 120, 125 million years old, whereas this one's only, you know, around 100 million years old. So we almost got the oldest one, not quite the oldest, but this one's in the best shape and by far the biggest. Why, why might it help scientists to, to understand uh, fauna's response to how the climate has changed? Well, you know, by looking at the fossil record, we can see how organisms reacted to their environment. And so a pearl like this shows us that even these ancient clams that are now quite extinct, uh, these guys are no longer here, they were bigger than Tridacna, you know, modern giant clams. They were really huge things. But you know, if they got a little bit of sand in the shell and it bothered them, they would also lay down that nacre and coat the thing with that inside shell to make it smooth and make it where it wasn't quite so irritating. And so that tells us, ah, oh, these clams aren't so different than the clams we have today, which means we can use them as models when we see what happened to them through time uh, we can kind of get an idea what could happen to modern clams. Gregory Webb, thanks for talking to us. Thank you, Lorna. My pleasure.